One Finance and Money Control Personal Finance Unlocked. Download the One Finance app. Investments in the securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Hello and welcome to Personal Finance Unlocked by One Finance, powered by Money Control. I'm Surabhi Upadhyay. Today we are initiating a new campaign to decode the secrets of personalized financial planning. This campaign is a partnership with One Finance, a new age personal finance advisory, and it aims to educate people on the importance of uniqueness and personalization of financial planning by individuals. Financial planning that is not customized to an individual's needs, lifestyles, and goals can be negatively uh, seen and it can impact a person's financial well-being negatively. It can also affect their state of mind. Well, with this campaign, through its various touch points, we will emphasize the linkage between financial and personal well-being. We invite you to explore the insights and knowledge share in this uh, campaign to unlock the secrets of personalized financial planning. Let's embark on a journey towards a financially secure and content future. To kickstart the campaign, we are going to chat with co-founder and CEO at One Finance, Keval Bhanushali, who's been an entrepreneur, who's also been a finance professional himself for, uh, I think, well over two decades, Keval? Yeah, almost two decades. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. So, you know, I want to start with the basics. Uh, I know you've been, a, you know, very close to the stock markets and the financial services world for a long time. Uh, then how this idea, how one finance, suddenly financial planning? Uh, so, I mean, of course, uh, like like I told you, Surbhi, you know, firstly, thank, thanks for having me here. And uh, like we discussed, you know, uh, finance has been part of my life for pretty long now. And uh, over the last uh, one and a half decade, uh, we have realized that every person has been very, very unique in their behavior with finances because, you know, the knowledge is out there, right? I mean, the, we are in an information world right now. So there's nothing really that nobody knows. Uh, but still, if you look at the financial conditions or the financial outcome of people, uh, it varies drastically. You know, it can be from zero to 100, uh, anywhere between that. Uh, so that itself is an outcome of their financial behavior. And we were determined to identify that what is it that is causing those kind of outcomes, you know, if it's not just the knowledge part of it. And uh, finally, here we are, we realize that uh, it is important to manage the input, which is your financial behavior, rather than focusing on uh, a particular number of wealth creation or an CAGR, which is just an outcome. That's interesting, but that, that must also be an idea that's hard to sell, right? Because for most people, it's all about how much will my fund generate, how much money, what is my return, how much will I, you know, uh, have by the end of one year, five years, etc. So, uh, so why is it important to look at things beyond just return? Why do you think that's important? Uh, so, I think the first statement that you made that this idea is definitely hard to sell, and that's why we have decided not to sell. <laughs> you know, in a world where everyone is selling, we decided not to sell, so we don't have any sales employee out there uh, in the entire organization. Specifically, because this is something that can't be, you know, just sold. Mm -hmm. It can be serviced. We can be a service provider to somebody who is seeking financial well-being. You can't go and tell somebody to be, uh, you know, seeking financial well-being. Mm. And uh, while we talk about the overall journey of financial well-being, you know, it is important to understand that financial inclusion, financial uh, independence and financial freedom are completely different than financial well-being. Because, you know, those three are stages. Mm. And this is a state. Financial well-being is a state. It's a state of mind that can be achieved right now, right here. This is just being in acceptance with what you really want to achieve mm -hmm. and uh, being in peace with what you want to achieve. So that is why we always say... That's the financial state. Yeah, it's a state. So if I accept that I'm broke, well, it's my financial state. I it's a, it's a state, it. right? Only then you can change it. Because, sure, you, know, sure. you know, change you, can, you cannot change something that you're not accepting, right? Sure, sure. So that is exactly what we uh, are doing. And that's exactly... You know, you can't put a number of retirement corpus for everyone. It can't be the same number, right? It That's can't right. be the same number. You can't the have the same, same goals. That, that typically ends up happening. Yeah, right. I mean, you, you look at it, right? You know, we have a prescribed formula. All of us know that, you know, the, the age of marrying can start from 22 mm -hmm. to probably 50, right? You know, or probably even, even further if you are a celebrity in that case. No, but, no so I, I take your point and I think you've raised some very interesting aspects because... Uh, the way lifestyles are changing and priorities are changing, I mean, you might retire at 35 today, you might start at 20, you might start at 50 with an absolutely new business. So I think the straight line approach to personal finance and to financial planning, uh, I think that also needs to kind of, uh, you know, be challenged 
considering life is uh, evolving so quickly. So, uh, so let's go back to this concept of uh, behavior. You're th so there's a concept of financial well-being. And there's, there's this whole concept of your behavior and marrying that right. with financial well-being. Uh, how do you look at that and why are you looking at that so closely? So, uh, you know, that's, that's the only thing probably which is in our control. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, you know, a CAGR or an alpha or something is a byproduct of a lot of things starting from politics to a lot of other things, you know, macroeconomics and a global uh, economics, a lot of things matter there. But if you have not made a plan mm -hmm. that can actually factor in your behavior, Okay. You know, it will be very difficult to stick to your decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we what we be went back and we have worked upon is it's it's under the concept of uh, you know big five personalities and that's what we uh, realize that that's what we all are made of and we tried to match those traits with financial behavior mm -hmm. and we created the current uh, money sign assessment framework and we decided that people should first know themselves before just embarking on a train that takes them to probably the most beautiful destination, but they don't intend to reach there. How interesting. So, so you actually do behavioral uh, you know, analysis of your customers before you, you advise them on products or, or different things they should do. Is that how it works? That it's first, it's, it's behavioral analysis. Absolutely. So that's the starting point. In fact, okay. you know, so and uh, the beauty is this is the same uh, psychological assessment. It is the world renowned psychological assessment known by the big five or the ocean framework and uh, it was invented uh, by uh, Dr. Louis Goldberg in uh, 1981 and uh, since then this has been the most uh, used psychological framework. Mm. We took a help of a lot of scientists from India and overseas as well and we were able to match all this along with uh, Charles Darwin theory of evolution to create the DNA match of uh, humans as to how we behave a certain way. You know some people enjoy the whole ups and downs of equity, mm -hmm. while the other people actually get anxious. Yeah, you yeah. can't tell someone who has an inherent anxiety, anxiety. Uh, to be patient to with, buy at uh, twenty thousand, 20, <laughs> and and be okay with a fifty percent kind of yeah. a correction, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't sell them a mid cap idea, yeah. which can probably see a sixty seventy percent kind of a drawdown mm -hmm. if that doesn't align to their psychology. I mean, and that's the reason today we are at you know ninety seven percent of the SIPs do not see beyond uh, fifth year. Okay. Uh, that's because they are not psychologically al aligned to uh, people, mm. uh, uh, you know, whenever there is an up or a down in the market, mm. they are not able to live with that. So when you say money signs, and this is, I think, a proprietary framework yes. that you folks have at, at One yes. Finance, how is that different or more comprehensive than, than, say, doing just regular risk analysis? Because most planners will talk about, okay, what's your risk profile? Uh, you know, are you a medium risk taker, a high risk taker? And accordingly, you know, you, even mutual funds for that matter, they have the gradation, right? The risk meter is there. So how is uh, something like a money science different uh, from just normal risk analysis? I think this this point just reminded me of the first conversation that Jeet and I had when we met, you know. So mm -hmm. Jeet, Jeet is a founder and MD at One Finance. And when we were first discussing, we were like, this is a wrong starting point. Because if you are asking me, what is my risk appetite? Mm. I don't know, right? I mean, I don't know. Today, if I have a few crores in my bank, I am a very, you know, risk uh, taking kind of a personality. But tomorrow, if my, my you know, income drops down or something adverse happens uh, around the world, mm. it can be absolutely different. So yeah. we realize that in our personal life. So for, for me, you know, my equity allocation is probably the least in my entire family. Mm -hmm. And my father, who is 70 plus, his equity allocation is the highest. Okay. in the family okay. so technically it should not be right i mean uh, yeah, the theory says you know the theory says no more equity the younger you are yeah right right, the right, you right. Are, yeah? but but i have not been in comfort whenever i have increased my equity allocation beyond a certain uh, you know uh, percentage that's, that's my that's my personal yeah that's yeah. my personal threshold and yeah. same with jeet right you know so we realize that risk appetite has got very limited to do with my net worth mm -hmm. which in the current form of risk assessment we are asking then so that's like walking into a doctor's clinic and doctor asking you you know what do you think you are suffering from <laughs> you know so what we instead need to do is analyze yeah. and tell the patient or tell an investor that this is what your risk appetite is yeah. you should be taking these level of risk and this is what is good for you yeah. 
Yeah. You know, so that's that's how we change. Yeah, and that, that's a very, very interesting thought. Actually, someone with maybe five crores in their bank account can also be risk averse. Absolutely. They can also say that Absolutely. I don't want to, you know, uh, have too much of variation. Someone with five lakhs in their bank account can say, you know what, I want to play for all in. I want to do small caps. Or, it, it's a very that, that, that's a brilliant thing and that in fact you know we did a lot of market research we appointed Frost and Sullivan they are one of the research partners that we had mm -hmm. and this stemmed out from a situation where the you know you would have a very you know economically backward kind of or a, from the lower strata a person who is extremely ambitious and is willing to go all in and going in and you know always taking risk by yeah. paying pay, you know playing lottery tickets or all these things why do you think that happens because they are personalities of something like a stealthy shark <laughs> and yeah. they, they, they derive purpose out of thrill. Yeah. You cannot yeah. tell that person to not go out there and take you know those thrill kind of uh, bets yeah. because that is what they derive their purpose out of. So mm -hmm. we try to explain them and then we tell them that you know your, your psychology could be saying this mm -hmm. but your demographic or your actual financials do not support this behavior mm -hmm. and that's how we build that entire financial plan for them. Oh, that's very, very interesting. And I learned something. And that's so true. Sometimes you don't think about these things and you realize how true they are, that your risk appetite has nothing to do with the money in your bank or your age. It's all about psychology. That That's where it really comes from. Fair enough. So you've made a strong case for, you know, the need to marry psychology with, with the, you know, financial planning and financial well-being. Now, in the effort to get to that goal of financial well-being, uh, the road is littered with lots of sellers, distributors, advisors, finfluencers. <laughs> it's a really noisy marketplace out there. So uh, how do you advise investors to deal with it, A? And how would you navigate that, that same, you know, very, very busy river uh, to sort of stand out as a different service provider? Yeah, so so we did some of the design changes in an organization. You know, we are we are unbiased by design. So what we did was we don't have any sellers, of course, you know, so we have zero commission policies and all that at place, of course. So, you know, there's, there's nothing that we recommend. One. Second, we don't have transaction compulsion. Mm. So in the current frame of things, you know, whenever you go to any service provider, they're like, you have to shut down your account here, move your assets here. Now you're dealing with someone who is there for, you know, being a custodian mm. is very different than being an advisor. Right. So we want to be an advisor. Sure. Probably you would have your comfort in having all your asset with a bank or with any other you know, uh, custodian, mm -hmm. which you feel is very safe. We don't want to change that. Mm -hmm. you know? So that is something which we did. And, and in, in the attempt of being unbiased, we have got qualified advisors only on our platform. Mm -hmm. We have ensured that they stick to the process. They stick to the entire algorithm that we have done and then add the rest 20% of the hyper-personalization with the person and you know kind of get that uh, plan executed and manage that behavior with the uh, so, so could you brought this up the point about algorithms mm -hmm. so would you say that one finance is sort of a mix between a robo advisory and personalized service but how, how do you sort of marry the two and how do you ensure personalization uh, which is so important given that ultimately it's all running on data analytics, right? There's a lot of technology, I'm, I'm guessing, that goes in the platform. Yes, there is a lot of technology, but we uh, avoid calling ourselves fintech for this reason because, you know, we are we are a completely hyper-personalized financial institution. We leverage on technology mm -hmm. to manage all these data points. Okay. You know, so what we have done is, uh, uh, hyper-personalization is our starting point, right? I mean, you start on our app with a 10-minute kind of an assessment. So that's that's definitely one of the starting point that immediately puts you into eight different categories and that's how we start. After that, we take the demographic, the life stages. So financial planning for a 35-year-old sportsman cannot be the same for a 35-year-old neurosurgeon, sure. right? Sure. So those things are taken into consideration on the cities and everything. And after that, the algorithm works multiple, uh, you know, uh, millions of permutation combination and then gives a financial plan, which again is reviewed by an unbiased financial advisor. Okay. who is qualified and is not our employee. Oh, okay. So it is by design that they are supposed to evaluate in a very neutral way. Okay. Because they don't have any targets, they don't have any misalignment that they have to do what we are saying, right? Okay. And only then the plan is presented to an advisor and, uh, the, you know, uh, or a customer. And after that, the journey begins to financial well-being. That's an interesting one now that you have these independent advisors uh, but they're not your employees. Right. So, so how does that relationship sort of work out? It's a, it's a partner relationship. Okay. You know, and we call them qualified financial advisors. So it is a strict mandate that you cannot be, you know, uh, someone who is not 
in either of the categories of a CFP, a CWM, or a you know a CB certified uh, 10A, 10B kind of a, a qualified professional, only those people are there on our platform. Okay. They undergo an extensive training by our committee, mm -hmm. uh, which is also again a neutral body. So we have created you know different chapter of co uh, committees for Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore. Mm -hmm. They are neutral uh, uh, individuals who are running financial uh, planning businesses, and they train these people. And only then the customers are allotted to them. Understood, understood. This is pretty interesting because I think in uh, in India at least, the whole idea of unbiased advice is still kind of nascent. People want it, but they don't know how to get it or they don't want to pay for it. And a lot of the personal finance advisory that we have is actually distributor driven, right? right. And there are commissions involved. How do you see that landscape? And how do you see one finance positioned in, in such a marketplace? So, uh, the primary reason why this is, you know, only investment driven financial planning, you know, even now, whenever we talk about financial planning in India, everybody thinks that there's going to be someone who's going to tell me where 10 places do I invest money, what mutual funds to buy or what insurance to buy, and then I'll be, you know, uh, rich forever. Yeah. That's not what financial planning is, right? You know, we, we factoring investment, liabilities, emergency planning, succession which is will and nomination all of it taxation mm. and then a financial plan is derived mm. so based on that it is very important that you know this is not a commission led or a distribution led uh, market and uh, that is already changing and and we strongly believe that even in the current situation we have gone live around 6 months back we have not come across even a single customer who is not willing to pay we feel that people value services very highly mm -hmm. but only if you are genuine to them Mm -hmm. If you are able to create that difference in them, and mm -hmm. especially the mass affluent, uh, which we are talking about, you know, they are sick and tired of being sold to. <laughs> you know, they, the moment they get a call, you know, somebody is, they, they, they get probably 100 calls a day, yeah. out of which 99 someone of them, yeah. Someone, some, someone say, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. And even in the cases of loan, right, I mean, people are selling loan and then they are saying that to cover the uh, interest component Take of it, start loan. SIP. Or, or start SIP. Okay. Start SIP. Okay. Now that's that's such a that's such a wrong way of selling something because I would rather advise them to do step up part payments every year okay. and reduce your loan tenure, okay. increase your EMI by 10-15% year on year basis okay. rather than just going for a you know 8 or a 10% kind of a, a SIP which you might have to again stretch okay. emotionally okay. and then you know undergo. So people are over invested in this range. They are extremely over-insured. We, we figured out that people are, you know, extremely over-diversified. Over-insured? Over-insured, yes. So some personalities that we, we sp uh, spoke about who are very, you know, risk averse or, you know, kind of those kind of personality like Vigilant Turtle or, you know, Farsighted Eagle. Those kind of personalities have a tendency to be over-insured. Okay. Somebody like a stealthy shark or a, a tactical tiger has a tendency of being under-insured. And when you say stealthy shark and tactical ti tiger, these are your behavioral buckets in which yeah 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 these are these are the scientific okay. these are the eight different okay. signs from uh, air land and water okay out of which we are you know made so mm -hmm. you know we we align our 90 90% kind of uh, dna matches to a lot of these animals and that's why we behave in a certain way mm -hmm. and you know we feel comfort right you know so yeah. so, so somebody feels comfortable being over insured somebody feels comfortable not spending for insurance so we try to explain them these things okay okay so as you know i, I think uh, the company is very young right uh, it's an how many uh, months or has it been a year? Yeah, yeah. The company, the company was incorporated in 2022. Okay. And uh, but of course, you know, it's backed by Marwadi Chandarana Group, which is a three-decade-old group. And uh, uh, so we we have ensured that this is not just another VC-funded company because you know you if you need to do right, you need to ensure that it'll take time. Yeah. You have to be at the right path, and uh, that's so, the reason. So what do you think? Uh, what's the roadmap and the you know, the, the milestones and the goalposts that you've set out for yourself, let's say over the next one to two years. So we have created something called as financial behavior score. Mm -hmm. This is again one of the, uh, you know, patent pending products that we have. And it, so it, it's an holistic score. Our goal is to ensure that people achieve at least 75 plus uh, uh, financial behavior score as an input and uh, we, we we intend to do a lot of things right i mean uh, uh, statistics say that uh, financial reasons are the largest reason of uh, uh, divorces in most of the developed uh, nations uh, they are the reason of depressions they are the reason of you know a lot of health problems so we want to ensure that the entire well-being aspect of it is understood mm. the goal is not to make you rich at an age of 80 
Yeah. The goal is to make you live peacefully and happily till 80. <laughs> you know, so so that's the whole point. You know, uh, uh, the this whole race of trying to chase a couple of uh, percentage higher CAGR, mm -hmm. it's it's not really worth it. And if you stick to a minimal kind of a financial behavior, you will any which ways achieve much more than you will with an anxious financial behavior. Okay, interesting thoughts. I'm I'm wondering what my uh, you know, a behavioral score perhaps could be. Maybe I should take that test and figure sure, out where sure. I stand. Yes, yes. But, uh, you know, as we're coming down to uh, final thoughts, uh, uh, Kevin, do, do tell us, you've been observing the financial landscape for so long. Uh, tell us about the mistakes you see people making and, you know, whether they come on one finance or not, when people sort of decide what they need to be doing with their personal finances, what's the starting point? What are the two, three things from your personal and professional experience that you would tell people to keep in mind? Uh, I would always tell them that there is no magic out there. I mean, nobody is going to give you some magic mantra to be rich in 20 years. That's not how it works. Only you can do that. You are the magic that you seek is always say. So, you know, maintain your behavior, understand yourself, understand your own purposes, and then it's going to be very easy. Don't fall for any quick and easy kind of uh, mechanism because... Like crypto, because there was a phase in, in COVID and lockdown. I remember everybody, including all my friends, everybody was like, you are in, in financial media. How come you don't do crypto? I was like, it's very, very simple. I don't understand it. I don't want to get into it. Absolutely, absolutely. Rather than defining crypto wrong or right, yeah. you just have to define whether it suits me or not. Exactly. You know, it could be the best thing in the world, but doesn't suit me. I don't need yeah. it. Yeah. You know, that is something which we tell people, you know. So stay true to yourself. Absolutely. Even when it comes to your own money and your personal yes. finance. Yes, yes, right? yes. Uh, sounds fantastic. It's been a great conversation, Cable. Thanks very much for uh, joining in today. And uh, good luck to you and your team. Thank you, Surbi. Thanks so much for having us. And it was a great conversation. Okay, well, uh, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in today on this very interesting episode of Personal Finance Unlocked by One Finance, powered by Money Control. Stay tuned to unlock the secrets of personalized financial planning and take charge of your financial future. See you again. One Finance and Money Control Personal Finance Unlocked. Download the One Finance app. Investments in the securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.